Welcome back, my beautiful friends. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. I am your host, Zen Sands. Coming up in our Crypto Frontier segment brought to you by CCP Digital, we are joined by Chris Pulley, who serves as CEO of CCP Digital and Bad Media Group. And you can check out our sister podcast at Bad Crypto Pod. He is joined by Reggie Jareth, CEO and founder of The Gather Network. Now, The Gather Network is an online platform that allows publishers to monetize without ads, providing businesses and developers access to affordable and reliable processing power. They provide a safe form of online monetization solution that content creators need in today's ever-growing digital process. They started Gather with one simple mission, to fix the internet's broken business model, and their expertise resides within cloud computing and blockchain technology. Today, we're discussing the environmental impacts of cryptocurrency and Web3, looking at what the actual impacts of wasted computing power will translate to, and the impacts of advertising changes as a result, leading us to chat about the monetization of websites coming with the changes of Web3. Now, as they get settled into the broadcast room, let's chat. Web3 represents the next generation of the internet, one that focuses on shifting power from big tech companies to individual users. It's a term you may have heard thrown around a lot lately. It basically promotes decentralized protocols and aims to reduce dependency on large tech companies like YouTube, Netflix, and Amazon, speaking into exactly what I have been preaching, the need to disrupt technocracy. Now, Web3 makes the proliferation of cooperative governance structures for once centralized products actually possible. Anything at all can be tokenized, whether it's a meme, a piece of art, a person's social media output, or tickets to your favorite concert. But with all this superpower comes downfalls and misconceptions and companies claiming that they understand the blockchain game when in fact they do not. Here to break it all down are Chris and Reggie. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Zen. Chris, welcome back. Reggie, so nice to have you on. Uh, Absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you. Let's start with you, Chris. Now, the basis of it all starts at the roots. Cryptocurrency mining uses significant amounts of energy as part of the proof of work time stamping plan, right? To add new blocks on the chain. Results indicate that in 2018, each $1 of Bitcoin value created was responsible for about 50 cents in health and climate damages in the United States. And that translates to about 38 cents in China. For example, in December of 2018, results illustrate a case for Bitcoin where the health and climate change crypto damages, quote unquote, roughly match each one dollar of coin value created. So this is, in fact, a serious real world if real world issue, if not addressed. Now, the focus here is to address this ecosystem weakness so that we can, in fact, be ahead of the curve of this technological emergence. So tell me as best you can what the actual impacts of wasted computing power will translate to, in your opinion, on a bigger scale and what the Gather Network is doing to mitigate mitigate this. Wow. Let me see if I can unpack that as a big question. Um, but the, I think the bottom line here is there's, uh, it takes energy to mine for different tokens and, and cryptocurrencies. Uh, that energy is in the form of electricity and, um, you know, it creates the uh, carbon footprint or the, you know, the, uh, the use of our energy. And so the, the future has to incorporate ways to reduce the power using alternative sources. Um, and I think that's really kind of what it brings us, you know, to why we have Reggie as our guest today, um, because there's just so many unique, innovative ways in the, the new Web3 world we're, we're moving into that we can, you know, save money, make money, save the environment and, and better our health all at the same time. Of course, and that Reggie circling back to the core of what Gather does best, which is seek out relationships with publishers to run two lines of code on your website with longer session times so that users' extra computing processing power won't be wasted. Talk to us about the models you have in place at Gather to help mitigate what would otherwise translate to waste. Essentially, it's it's fairly simple, right? Um, A user visits a website, they opt in and the spare computing power is being used to secure the gather blockchain, right? So in, in layman's term, 
you essentially you're already paying for your electricity usage, right? Based on your PC, mobile, iPad, gaming console, whatever it may be. And in this sense, we're using a fraction, not even a, a, such a small amount of uh, computing power, and it's being used for something good. Secure the secure the blockchain, and in return, these publishers get rewards for doing it, so they don't have to rely on, let's say, advertising or current you know monetization methods, which a lot of publishers kind of abuse today with clickbait, click jacking, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, look, Chris, I mean, Chris or, or Reggie, look, I feel like Web3 can be understood as the read, write, own phase of the internet, rather than just using free tech platforms in exchange for our data, users can now participate in the governance and operation of the protocols themselves. And this, what this really means is that people can become participants and shareholders, not just customers or products, right? And in Web3, these shares are called tokens or cryptocurrencies, and they represent ownership of, of decentralized networks known as blockchain. So if you hold enough of these tokens, you have a say over the network and holders of governance tokens can spend their assets to vote on the future of say a decentralized lending protocol. How do you guys foresee this translating to monetization of these websites coming into web three when most don't even understand the actual implications, transition software, and even hardware updates necessary? That's a good question. I'm not sure. Was that for me or Reggie? Yeah, anyone dive right in. Okay, let me start just as I'm coming from 10 years and, uh, a digital advertising analytics uh, business. And the, the trend is for all the privacy and the data to, to then be owned by the individual. That's changing the landscape of digital advertising and, and ad agencies in the world and looking for ways to, uh, for publishers, if ads are going away, ad revenue is reducing at a rapid rate right now. Uh, from the privacy and the, the other networks. So there's got to be a way for publishers to capitalize on the Web3 and also offset the loss of income from these ads. And, um, you know, I think I see this is probably take a little bit of time, but there will be a tipping point where at some point the ad revenue will reduce and the computing power revenue will increase as the value of the network increases and as the usage is adopted and there'll be a tipping point. But we got an expert here, Reggie, in my close. So yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head there. Um, with the, what happened with GDPR a couple of years ago, could that being implemented, you know, it, it affected publishers, especially within the Europe region or visitors coming from Europe. Uh, then we have other, everyone being very privacy centric today. Uh, within the blockchain space, you know, or Web3, if you will, people, there's a shift towards owning your own data or, or what's being collected everywhere. So that's, you know, another hit towards publishers and the ad revenues. And let's be very, very honest. Does anyone really, really, really find ads useful? 99 or 95% of the time, I, I don't think anyone is be like, hey, I love that ad that came up on YouTube before I was trying to listen to the song or something. Exactly. Oh I, I couldn't agree uh, more. And you know what? A great example of, of the paradigm shift is actually the gaming industry, right? Gamers um, uh, grumble endlessly about the bugs that developers leave in their favorite video game or how the latest patch has upset the balance of their favorite weapon, so to speak. But with Web3, gamers can invest in the game itself and vote on how things could be run. And large Web2 companies like Meta and Ubisoft, they're creating virtual worlds powered in part by Web3, right, NFTs, will also play a huge role in reshaping the gaming industry by allowing players to become the, the immutable owners of the items they accrue. Uh, talk to me about how what you're doing at Gather Network with your revolutionized, with the way that you're revolutionizing NFTs and your proprietary model, how this is going to play into the proper monetization. So a way of how, let's say we talk about the metaverse and NFTs, because well, NFTs are essentially being used as play to earn items. This is the most popular thing that's one of the most popular trends that's going on. To supplement your income um, that you're getting within the metaverse from your items or however you generate your items, your P2E items, um, you can run Gather on top of it. So while you're spending time in the metaverse battling people or playing whatever game it is, um, secure the, you know, opt in and secure the Gather blockchain and get some additional revenue for it. Or some Exa money. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 
Exactly. Chris, I mean, we have about two minutes left, but the main criticism of Web3 technology is that it falls short of its ideals, right? Ownership over blockchain networks is not equally distributed, but concentrated in the hands of early adopters and venture and venture capitalists, right? And a public spat recently erupted on Twitter between Block Inc. CEO Jack, Jack Dorsey and various venture capitalists over Web3 bringing this debate to the forefront. What do you say to this? Um, I believe that the landscape is an open uh, frontier and that everyone is going to be jockeying to get their peace, their control. But the design of the decentralized and the open ledger model um, with the ability for the DAOs and, and open global governance, um, I just believe we're, we're entering into a new time and history, and um, I'm excited to be here witnessing it. Um, and I don't believe there's an, uh, any unfair advantage uh, across all economic levels moving into this new frontier. So um, the players with the big capital and money, and hopefully they have their heart in the right place as they're entering. But the, the reality is, is community wins in the future. Community is Web3. And if you can't win at community, you're going to have a hard time doing business going forward. Amen. You said it. That's that's it. I echo your sentiment entirely. Guys, thank you so much for coming on. It was such a pleasure talking to you. Reggie, thank you for uh, giving us so much insight and congratulations on what the Gather Network is doing. You guys are really on, on the cusp of something great. Thank you for having us. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you Zim. You're welcome. Like, guys, listen. And the real message here is, is that what happened on the decentralized internet is decided by the investors versus what happens on the main internet is decided by Twitter, Facebook, Google, and a small number of other companies. So it's up to you. If you want to take the plunge, take the plunge, but be well informed. Definitely check us out. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710WR, The Voice of New York. That was our Crypto Frontier segment brought to you by CCP Digital. Check them out at ccpdigital.com and check out the Gather Network, gather.network. They're also on the gram at gather underscore network and at ccp.digital. We'll be right back after this.